A flood of students filled the halls, as to be expected during lunchtime. I follow the crowd temporarily until I reach an intersecting hall. There's nothing I dislike more than eating in that courtyard. It's always packed with students, and the commotion can get real obnoxious. I have my own spot that I prefer to eat at, one I found just a few days after I switched to the school. However, as I walk down the hall, I can't help but notice something up ahead. I hear what sounds like a person yelling. Approaching further, the yelling becomes increasingly disruptive. Damn, that's right on the way to where I need to go to. Turning down the corner of the hall, I finally see who's making all that noise. Hold on, guys. Saying things. I didn't mean to. Oh, don't you give me that crap. You came to me and full force and shoved into me. I swear I, I wasn't trying to push you. I don't care if you aren't trying to push me over. The damage is already done. Okay, there's an eye there as well. It's like, what, what else did she say? Thanks to your ass, my phone now has a giant crack covering the screen. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's not going to fix my screen. Further down the hall appears to be two girls. From the sound of it, I'd assume the one with the coral pink hair broke the other girl's phone. I even watch as she shoved the screen in front of the girl's face. Eh, that's unfortunate. You know, I just got this for my birthday, right? It hasn't even been two weeks and you already managed to break it. She's sputtering excuses. Oh, I didn't know. I was only trying to... Don't you know how much this costs? Yeah, right. Then you can be the one to buy me a replacement. She forcefully pins the other girl into the wall, causing me to temporarily stop in my tracks. I see the screen light up and the damage becomes clearer to me. That's the broken phone she's talking about? There's no signs of screen tears or any serious damage. In fact, I'd go as far as to say the damage is purely cosmetic at worst. Wait, what? Wait! See, you're getting all beat up. I don't have it. Before the girl's able to finish her sentence, she gets kneed in the stomach. That seems a bit excessive. Whatever, if that girl got herself into that problem, she can get herself out of it too. I continue walking down the hall in the hope that I can just pass by without any interruptions. Wow, we're an asshole. Also, we misspelled interruptions. Don't you think for a second that you're getting away from this one, Scott Frame? Oh my god, the other interesting boxes. I want to know how you plan to... Who the hell are you? So much for that. No one of importance. Don't give me that. I asked who you are. I'm heading over to lunch. Just need to pass by you two. Nothing more than that. The lunch area is back the way you came. You shouldn't even be here. Her entitlement leaves me speechless. Focusing her attention off me, she turns back to the girl who's been on the verge of tears. Don't think you can weasel your way out of buying me a replacement. Think of the ways you're going to pay this off yet. I, I don't know. Now what was that? You gotta speak up a little. Oh my goodness. I said I don't know. The girl angrily pushes her by the neck into the wall. All the while, I awkwardly stand just past the girls. It doesn't help that they're standing in my way, either. How about I ask you in a tone you can understand? You are going to find out a way to pay for this, and you're going to tell me before the end of lunch. Do you understand? Oi, 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 oi. I said... She raises her fist as if she's soon to throw a punch. The girl only flinches in preparation for the impact. Is she... Not going to do anything about it? Do you understand? She attempts to throw a punch, but before it lands, I grab hold of her wrist. What the hell are you doing? <sighs> Come on now, that's enough. I don't need some asshole stepping into my business. Now get lost. Look, just head to lunch, all right? Stay with everyone. No reason to keep wasting this person's time with such a petty problem. Excuse me? If you're thinking she can just break my phone and get away with it, then you must be a dumbass. No, I'm thinking that this is far enough. It's obvious that little crack on your screen doesn't warrant a full replacement. So I'm going to have to ask you to cut the bullshit and go to lunch. It's going to keep happening, my dude. What did you say? Ah! Now annoyed, I tighten the grip I have on her wrist. You heard what I said. Let go of me already! She attempts to pry my hand off, but to no success. <sighs> Why'd I have to get myself into this? Look, I'll only say this one more time. Go to lunch, alright? You better let go right now, asshole! Ah! 
My thumb digs into the inner part of her wrist, all the while I become progressively irritated. This isn't going to end anytime soon if I keep this up. With my other hand, I snatch the phone from her grasp. What are you- And then I quickly toss it down the hall, screen side down. What the hell was that for? Oh, what? I don't answer, pushing her lightly in the direction of her phone instead. You're gonna answer me or what? No. Ah, you asshole! She glares at me before rushing to her phone. You're gonna regret this, you hear me? She mumbles a few more things to herself before storming down the hall, all of which are just out of range for me here. Well, that was a massive pain in the ass. Whatever, it's all settled now. Now I can finally... Thank you! I don't know what I would have done on my own! Oh, right. I'm surprised she didn't run off yet. You should start heading off to lunch as well. It's not going to last all school day. Yeah, yeah right. With that said, I continue walking down the hall. Wait, what about you? Hmm? What about me? How come you aren't going to the courtyard with the red nose? I have my reasons. Oh, alright. Well, thank you again. She certainly changed her mood quick. One second she's crying, and in the very next she's carrying a bright smile across her face while running down the hall. Weird. Before I know it, it's the end of the school day. What's even better is that after homework I'll have nothing to do for the rest of the day. Until tomorrow, that is. I can try to enjoy it the last of the time I have before going back to work and catch up on sleep. Exiting the school, I no longer see those students that were outside earlier. There's nothing left now but a few loose flyers lying on the floor. I might not care much for clothes, but a part of me wonders what that was all about. It's not long until the bus arrives, allowing myself and a few other students to step on. Since there aren't any seats available, or many, I opt to stand next to one of the front poles. Once the bus has everyone crammed in, it takes off to restart its route. I watch as one by one the other students and passengers get off at their respective stops. I'm left waiting here for an extra half hour before I finally arrive at my own stop. There are some times where I wish my house was within walking distance of the school. But places like that are too expensive and are generally meant for households of people. It's not a huge problem how things are now, though. Only half a year is left before I can finally focus more on work and less on school. I step into my room and toss my bag inside, or beside my desk. Taking a seat upon my bed, I turn on the TV to serve as some background noise. Sometimes I wish I could just rest here forever. But even on my days off, I'm aware of what I have to do. I look over to my bag, remembering the assignments I still have yet to complete. I reluctantly force myself off of my bed and open my bag to reveal one of my textbooks. Sitting down at my desk, I find the pages my teacher assigned for our class to read. The last page contains a multitude of questions, none of which seem too difficult. I should be able to finish this up and still have more than enough time to rest before deciding if I should head out today. After what felt like a few hours of work, I finished up with the last of the questions. That took longer than I initially thought. Some of the questions weren't in order, forcing me to reread the passage a number of times. It's arbitrary things like that which I hate the most. I make sure that all of today's assignments are accounted for before putting them back inside my bag. All this work has me starving, that's for sure. Walking over to my kitchen, I take note of what ingredients I do and don't have. Judging by what I have currently, I have enough for a variety of dishes. After careful consideration, I decide to make myself a nice stir-fry with chicken. I grab each of the necessary ingredients and cookware before getting started. Drying the last of the dishes, I look outside my window to see the sun is close to setting soon. If I want to make it back with enough time to get proper rest, I should go soon. In my reflection, however, I realize I'm still wearing my school uniform. Whoops. I check around for any stains that could have come from tonight's dinner. Unfortunately, right on my collar sits a medium-sized sauce stain. Well, crap. Hopefully my spare is still clean. I promptly head to my room for a quick change. I look inside my closet for a change in clothes. However, most of what's in there is dirty as well. That's including my spare. Ugh, fine, I'll just make an extra stop then, jeez. I take out one of my only clean gray shirts along with a pair of navy jeans. These will have to do, I guess. I also grab a jacket, just in case. 
After stuffing most of my wardrobe inside a bag, I proceed to turn the lights and the TV off in the room. It's only then that I head out for the night. Hmm. I anxiously peer down each side of the road every other second. A car drives by, but doesn't stop at any of the neighboring houses. Some people walk by, but not a single one of them look at me. For the next few minutes or so, I act casually on my phone. One minute goes by, and then another soon after. Geez, where are they already? If I stay here any longer, I'll look suspicious. Suddenly, some vehicle pulling down the street shuts off their headlights. That's when I see a white van pull to the curb. About time. What shady business are we into? October 12th, 2017. 7.23 a.m. The bus makes its eventual stop in front of the school and I step off. Once I'm on the sidewalk, the bus leaves to continue its route. As I approach the school further, I once again see crowds of people by various stands. Again? There's even more people outside than yesterday. If there was some event, why are they still out today? Out of curiosity, I survey the area for some sort of context. There's a few handwritten signs talking about some festival on the 13th. That's tomorrow, right? Strange, I wonder why some celebration on the 13th of all days warrants such a plethora of advertising. Does that make it Friday the 13th? I reach my locker and then put the series of digits needed for it to open. It clicks open and I swap yesterday's textbook with today's. Seeing the cover of my textbook fills me with relief. I've always found my math and science classes to be the easier ones to get through. They're nothing like my history class, at least. Is this the same person? I don't know. How about you ask him yourself? Hmm? Oh yeah, it is. As I close my locker, I see some guy approaching me along with a familiar-seeming girl behind him. <laughs> what do you think you're doing, bud? Huh? I'm talking about what you did to my girl yesterday. She says you hit her. I look over to the girl, realizing she was that brat from yesterday. <sighs> what does she want? Eh. Well, I didn't. Yes, you did. You hit me square in the face. I still even have the bruise. She cuts me off, showing what appears to be a discoloring on her left cheek. I can't get a great look at it, but the bruise has an unnatural appearance. Maybe it's some sort of makeup trick? It's certainly not a bruise she got from a punch, that's for sure. That's disregarding the fact that I never hit her in the first place. I don't know where you got that, but it wasn't from me. Ugh. That looks awfully like you. Don't try to lie your way out of this! You gotta be fucking with me. I don't have the time to be dealing with this. I attempt to move past, but the guy moves in my way. Excuse me. Where the hell do you think you're going? To class, now move. He swings a punch with just bar er, which just barely misses me and hits a nearby locker. Oh, fuck! That was close. I didn't expect him to throw a punch that soon. But, eh, what do I know about him? The guy swings at me a few more times, but is unable to land a single punch. He's so slow. And not very creative, either. Stop running away and fight already! <sighs> what exactly is he trying to achieve by aimlessly swinging right and left hooks at me over and over? At this rate, I'll just dodge my way out of here. On second thought... I notice one of his next right hooks extends just a little bit too far out. I use this brief opportunity to swiftly pull his arm back and move past him. Oh shit! The guy loses his balance, almost falling to the ground. He didn't take long to figure out at all. Not like that even matters now. Class is gonna start soon. I should leave before I'm late. Where the hell do you think you're going? I'm heading to class now. Eh, uh, like hell you are! Picking up my bag, I look towards the guy who's now fully charging towards me. He may be persistent, but his size makes him slow. When the guy gets close enough, I just dodge out of the way again. Whoa! And unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to regain his balance this time. Oh, My nose! Oh my god, are you okay? So, I wonder if they're gonna blame me for that, too. Checking the room, I spot a camera pointing just away from our direction. I think I'll be fine. With my bag in hand, I start walking down the hall. Ugh! Get back here! Despite being several meters away by this point, they continue calling out to me. 
but the volume of the hallway crowd eventually drowns out their voices. Time flies by as my last class before lunch wraps up. Hopefully I won't have any interruptions this time. I walk down the hall and sure enough, there's no one. Good. Before long, I reach the door leading to the roof and head upstairs. I take a seat in my usual spot and open my bag. Inside is a container holding leftovers of the dinner I made for myself yesterday, right beside an ice pack. I take that out along with a bottle of water I brought and start to eat. There's nothing, li or nothing I like more about this spot than being away from the crowds of students gathered in the courtyard. Their commotion is loud more often than not, making it distracting whenever I want so much as form a thought in my head. When I want to, so much, yeah. Although there isn't much to do up here. After I finish eating, I'd re either do homework or rest until the lunch bell rings. I don't have anything assigned for homework so far, so it looks as if I'm going with the latter. I suddenly have this weird feeling of being watched. I turn my head to see why that is. <laughs> Who the hell is this she again? Need something? No, I felt bad since I opened left right after you saved me yesterday. Saved you? Oh, right. She's the girl from yesterday. I wonder what she wants. I wouldn't say I saved you, really. But you did. If it weren't for you, she would have hit me really hard until I bought her a new phone. And I just wanted to talk to you a little more, but I didn't get the chance. Talk about what? Yeah. She gestures her hand in front of her chin, showing that she's in deep thought. If she wanted to talk to me so badly, the least I'd assume is that she had something to talk about. Oh, I know! I just realized I never asked for your name! All that thinking, to ask for my name. Oh, but yeah, we have to start somewhere. <sighs> it's Hallie. Hallie? That's a full cool name! My name's Sayori! She attempts to greet me by reaching out her hand, but I don't return the exchange because I'm an asshole. Instead, I continue taking bites out of my lunch as she slowly retreats her, retreats her hand back. Something's up with her behavior. It's weird. She talks like some child. Or, or like an elementary school teacher, rather. It makes it hard to tell if she's here to get something out of me or if she truly is just an oddly cheerful person. I notice her take a seat next to me on the bench and begin eating her own food. She really doesn't tend to stay here until she thinks of something to talk about, huh? Oh, hey, Alex, good. What is it? Stir fry. Did your mom make it for you? No. It's leftovers I made for myself. That's pretty cool. I wish I knew how to cook. 